welcome back ladies and gents so we are here near andover i believe yeah andover uh we drove about 26 minutes from home we are going to be doing a class one shift on the bank holiday weekend uh, the pay rates were decent it's 20 pound an hour as always fully transparent over here and it's basically a trunk run from here in andover all the way through to birmingham to the main hub picking up a tractor unit taking it across to somewhere else and then back down to andover so it's literally maybe an eight nine hour shift apparently i don't believe it but the roads should be dead and we'll see how we get on so yeah let's go and find this tractor unit let's hook up and make sure you subscribe as you can see it's a double decker so we need to fix the uh sat nav my trusty sat nav make sure that the ride height is said correct also we have to change that because there's no way this is 14.4 which, you know, if you don't change stuff like that, it gets a bit dangerous because then you start thinking you are 14.4 when you look at that and you come up against the bridge and then suddenly your trailer lifts you up and yeah, it's all sorts of wrong. We need to do a manual entry because I started work at half six. So what I'll do is I'll put in, yes, I was not resting until now. I was... In. Until... And then this is where you put rest until the time you start. Okay, so I started at 6 a.m. Okay, cool. So now, manual entry, I was rested until the 6 in the morning. And then now I need to change this to other work. So I was working until 6.29. Done. Confirm manual entry. All right, and then sometimes it just says that you just press OK and you're all good. All right, but essentially that's what you need to be doing. If you get somewhere, let's say you start work at seven and you don't leave and you're, you're in the truck ready to go at 7.45, all right? You've hooked up, defects check, all of that stuff. You need to be putting that in. <laughs> you can't just be putting that you started driving, started work at 7.45 because you didn't. You've done 45 minutes worth of work. So working time directive, driving di time directive, all of that stuff, you need to be rigid with it. Anyway digress we've got this lovely little scania you know i say little it's bloody huge we've got the scania and we are headed up to birmingham as i explained earlier all right nice little 20 pound an hour saturday i know bank holiday weekend i know five in the no six in the morning oh i know <laughs> but nonetheless uh i'm actually excited to drive this it looks like a really nice truck i've only driven that crappy scania uh from that other vlog so this is gonna be a very very good journey i can feel it already so yeah let's get started let's get moving And we're off. Do you know what? It's been a long time since I've driven a double decker and it's actually not that bad. Same, same thing really. I mean, obviously if the high winds are uh, an issue, then it's not gonna be the same. But apart from that, it's, it's yeah, nothing, nothing crazy, nothing uh, out of the ordinary. You just need to set your trusty sat nav to the right height and you're good to go. Oh, and this Scania pulls so well, honestly. Oof, I'm a fan. I never knew what the hype was about until now, to be honest. Anyway, we're looking at joining the M3, going all the way up, and I believe we then want to be going up towards Birmingham and stuff like that, so yeah. It's gonna be a lot of motorway driving. About three and a half hours there, three and a half hours back. Oh, this thing's smooth, man. <laughs> Love it. Honestly, there's nothing better than just being behind the wheel. You got a good load, everything strapped down, ready to go, which by the way, they did all for me. It was all done, ready to go. I just had to give it a check. You know what I mean? You can't just trust other people's words. So I gave it a little check, it was all good. And empty roads, Saturday morning, the sun's out or gonna be out once this fog gets melted away. 20 pound an hour, easy 200 quid. Guaranteed, it's contracted for 10 hours, so. Um, but it, should, it shouldn't take me anywhere near 10, the guy said. Um, you know, you're looking at eight hours maximum, he said, so we shall see. So yeah, can't beat it really. Just a chilled Saturday morning. Going up, Birmingham, coming back down, one drop off, um, and we're coming back empty, which is always a bonus. Anyone that says it's not is lying to you, all right? Coming back empty is the best feeling. You don't have to worry about nothing. Oh, he's overtaken nice and easy. Right, so we're, uh, I don't know, an hour in? If that, we're just gonna take a little 15 minute break because I need a wee and a coffee and maybe some sort of snack. So we're gonna pull into services here. 
And that's the beauty about doing stuff like this. It's, it's very relaxed. If you've got time on your side, so to speak, you're not meant to be doing it at this time or whatever, and it's not strict, then you're good. You can ultimately go get yourself a coffee, get yourself a snack. It's not that strict. I don't really like stopping at services like this where you've got a you've got a weird way to enter them. It just puts a bit of extra time on your journey that I don't really like, but is what it is. Oh, look at that. Perfect. There we go. Truck, that's what we want. HGV, thank you. What we got here then? KFC, M&S, Costa, Greg's, Burger King. Oh, Pret. Oh, I haven't had a Pret in ages. Bit expensive, but it is payday weekend. Might treat myself to a little Pret. Wow, that is one big bit of kit. Look at that beauty. Right, time for some reversing maneuvers. Some of the best reversing you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> I'm joking, I, I still struggle with it, you know, but it's something that just comes with practice, I guess. Uh, my trailer is very wonky. I've totally messed this up, but we shall fix it. There we go. Once it starts to come around, take the steering off a little bit. I'm looking at the top mirror because the bottom one isn't showing me much. There we go. As you come around, you start to see a bit more. Still a bit wonky, so we're just going to do a shunt. And there we go. A little bit more, a little bit more. That's good, I'm happy with that. Handbrake on, switch this bad boy to neutral. Which, by the way, right, I'm not, I, I've not driven many Scanners, right? In fact, I've driven one and it was manual. So when I got in this, and I'm looking for the, ham, uh, the, the gears here to turn it into automatic or, you know, drive, I'm like, okay, that's aircon, that's aircon. What the hell's going on here? They're all missing. What's that? <laughs> I realized it was an airline thing. Um, and I'm like, where, where do I get going? And then I've seen, I turned the steering wheel and I've seen this bad boy and lo and behold, that's the one there. And to go to automatic, you got to push in and then go. To go to neutral, you can just pull it back. And to go to reverse, I couldn't get to reverse to work for ages. And then I realized you have to push down and then reverse. So far, so good, love the Scania. Time to get ourselves on a break. So I shall press number one until I see a bed. That's me on break at, so at half past eight, we'll get going. In fact, 31 past, just to be, oh, lights are still on. That's not good. Before we do go though, I will check the vehicle, take the sunglasses. Yeah, before we do go, I do want to check the vehicle, make sure it's all good to go. Wow, this, this scanny has got some height to it, I'll tell you that. Yeah, we're all looking good, tires looking good, no bulges or anything like that. We've got some straps missing and that one's come off. That's not good. See stuff like that. It's just sometimes, sometimes you think you've tightened it, you made a mistake, it comes off or anything like that. This is your time to now come and fix it. That's a big bit of kit. Jesus Christ. Good to go. Beep, beep. Well, there we are. I went for a Burger King instead. Nice little latte and some sort of breakfast I don't know, breakfast burger thing. I'm not really sure. Oh, that feels so good. Oh, check this bad boy out. We've got some bacon, some egg, some sort of sausage burger thing. Not bad. Mmm, that's phenomenal. Don't get me wrong, I paid eight quid for that. Absolutely diabolical, but it's really good. Overall, I'm giving that eight out of 10. Right, we're gonna set off now. Oh, in fact, before we do. Yep, Kingpin's still good. Yeah, that's definitely something you wanna get used to checking. Look, I'm not saying people do it, but can you imagine if some absolute horrible person unclipped the dog clip and pulled out your Kingpin and your legs were still up? Can you imagine that? It's just good practice. All right, Mr. Taco Brake Man, we are gonna, in fact, before I press that, what you can do is most vehicles have a check. Look, so you can check. I've had a 20 minute break. Ooh, lavish. I'll put that on drive. We're getting ready to go. All right, and we're off. That was a lovely little break. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Burger King, who knew? Dark horse for breakfast, 12 out of 10, nah, eight out of 10. But still, 
If it weren't for the price, it would have definitely been a little bit higher. I'd have gone 8.5. Right, so we've got about 70 miles left to go before we get to near Birmingham. All right, I do believe we are here. Right, so we actually need to be on the other side. Uh, so I need to do a little turn around, follow the one-way system, and then we're gonna be dropping off the uh, trailer. Right, so when you get out, first things first, handbrake, and it's either usually located on the chassis there, or sometimes it can be located in and around this area, okay? But first things first, trailer handbrake, and then usually what I do is go and get my number plate, which I've already done, and then I will do the legs. So handbrake, legs, so you secure the trailer, which I'm about to do now. Oh my God, this is rusty. Anyway, once you've uh, given yourself a tetanus jab <laughs> for all that rust, get the legs down. I've already done the number plate. Go around, do the pin, do the king pin. And the reason I'm not touching the airlines yet is because I want to show you a little trick that one of the other boys taught me. And it's just to save yourself getting in there and getting yourself all messed up and greased up. Okay, dog clip is off. Pull the kingpin out, that's now ready to go. Now, instead of letting the legs smash, what we do is let the trailer take the weight already. So what we can do is lower the suspension. Right, that suspension's down as far as it'll go. The weight on the trailer. So as you pull away, it's not gonna bounce and smack on the floor or anything like that. Now, I know the airlines are still connected. So what I'm gonna do is just drive forward a little bit. Just turn it off so you can hear me a bit better. And look at that. You've got tons of room in here. All right, you don't have to start messing about with the tiny little, tiniest little gap. Get yourself all greased up and horrible. All right, so now we've got loads of loads of room. All right. And with these, make sure we're putting them back pro properly as well, that we figure out a good place for them. But do you see how easy and quick that is? Ah, look at that. Look at that bad boy. So they've got hooks. So you can put the hooks on there, like so, like so. These ones, you want back here. And the reason I'm doing this properly is because I'm not picking up another trailer. If I was picking up another trailer, I would just leave them. I'll just leave them down there. Next trailer I go pick up, I'll make sure I get underneath, leave this much room, plug in nice and easy. And now, the legs have the weight. So I can just pull away, nice and easy, done. So you look at that, perfect. Not even a bang or anything like that, smooth as hell. That's essentially how you can, it, it, when you start getting a bit more experience, you can start tweaking the bits that you were taught by an instructor to the bits that benefit you and the work that you're doing, okay? For instance, the instructors don't like you doing that little extra step where you pull out and then do the cables, because you might forget, you might drive off and rip all the, uh, all the cables off. But when you start getting a bit more experience, you start seeing some of the other boys around the yard connecting and disconnecting that way. I know it's an extra step, but I like it, I enjoy, having that massive space and not getting myself greased up or dirty or anything like that and just being able to, to crack on with it especially when it's cold or raining you want more space to get the job done quicker so yeah essentially that's that's how it is secure the trailer legs down number plate kingpin slide uh, let the suspension down obviously the legs are down let the suspension down now the trailer's got the weight pull forward a little bit give yourself more room all the airlines out and off you go go pick up either a new trailer or back to the depot which is what i'm gonna go and do back to the depot we go perfect and just like that we are empty tractor unit only it feels great i'm gonna get back as soon as possible it's probably another three hours it says i mean 10 to 11 right now and it says we get back at two o'clock. Now, I have to have a half hour break, so I presume we're looking at getting back for, you know, 2.30, 2.45. No one's, no one's at the depot, it's completely empty, so I'm under my own kind of timings, really. So the quicker I get there, the better. But also, if I feel like taking a couple breaks, why not? Do you know what I mean? 
Oh, this thing goes, man. Oh, I'm going to have to be careful because I reached I reached 45 miles an hour in like no time. Uh, and it's a 40 down here. So, yeah, if, if you are driving tractor unit only, just be aware that the torque and, and horsepower on these tractor units, you know, they're, they're quite a lot. So it's, it's just um, something to look out for, really. Also, I'd love to know the specs of the engine and stuff like that because... This thing's turbo's whistling like, like a rally car. Like, I don't know if you can even hear it. You probably won't be able to. Just a quick update. So we're about 25 odd miles away. Weather's looking a lot better. I'm so close to finishing this shift and enjoying this bank holiday weekend. I cannot wait, honestly. But it's been a good shift so far. I mean, all, all we've literally done is tipped up at six in the morning, drove up to, uh, taken the double decker up to Birmingham, dropped it off and come back empty couldn't have been an easier shift and sometimes that's why I really enjoy working for agencies like a lot of the time you don't really know what you're gonna get and a lot of the time again because they know that your agency they try and prep as much as possible for you so the odd shift instead of you going there and hooking up and all of this and that and the other they usually have everything done, ready to go. So I tend to generally find that everything's pretty much done, ready to go. I just tip up and I start driving within the first 20 minutes um, of getting there. Obviously, taking into account your uh, vehicle checks and all of that kind of stuff, but it's, it's very quick. All right, we are back at the depot finally after three hours and I need to go and park this up in Bay, Bay 9, I believe. Again, no one here. So yeah, just uh, just get to Bay 9, park up. They said leave the keys inside, and off I go. All right, perfect. So that's us done, parked up, keys inside, ready to leave. Oh, actually, show you how to, so literally press and hold number one, click OK, and that's how you eject the card in case anyone didn't know that. Um, but no, yeah, really good shift. Like I said, 20 quid an hour on a Saturday. We did nine hours work. So got an extra hour in the bag, 200 quid. And we still got the whole day ahead of us. So yeah, I definitely count that as a win. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully you like the video. Hopefully you subscribe for more content and I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>